So I'm a dart through and through. I love Bountiful High. Take a lot of pride in being a brave. Graduated from Bountiful High School, the class of 1976. I went to Davis High School. Graduated in 1968. I attended Bountiful High School. Graduated in 1985. I graduated from Clearfield High School in 1977. Davis High School, class of 1990. I attended Davis High School from the years of 1967 and graduated in 1970. I don't, I won't have one good story to tell. Preface what I say by there were a lot of things you could do then that you can't do now. We decided that we would stay overnight at school. So I told my parents I was staying at somebody else's house and they told their parents that person said that he was staying at my house and the reality is we all stayed overnight in the school. So a big group of us, maybe 20 of us or so, uh, all brought treats, things to eat overnight, chips and dip and all the kinds of things kids like in high school. And we hid them in the prop room on the stage at Bountiful High School and waited for the custodian to leave. And we could hear him going around checking all the doors and we were all in the prop room trying to be quiet, crammed in there with the door shut on the stage until he was gone. When he was gone, we got out of the prop room, we played tag in the dark halls of the school at night. We ate all the chips and dip and drank the drinks that we brought with us and uh, went into the home ec room and took mannequins and put them on the toilets in the girls' restrooms and locked the stall doors so they always thought there was somebody in there sitting on the, on the toilet in the, in the stalls of the girls' restrooms. Um, we, we had a great time. One day we had one of our uh, male students decide that he would, it was a second story class, so we, he decided he would pose himself as if he had fallen onto the ground below. And when our uh, teacher came in to uh, start the class, he found all of us standing next to the old lift up windows at Davis High, looking down and just upset that our classmate had fallen out of the window. No, he hadn't really fallen out of the window. But our teacher, who was, who was a very, very nice man, but was older and believed exactly what it, we wanted him to, he thought that the boy had fallen out of the window. My senior year, some of us in one of our lesser lucid moments decided as a form of rebellion that we would uh, abscond with the gates. And so about a week before graduation, several of us stellar students took all but one of the gates off the, off the gates at the campus and disposed of them around Davis County. Uh, we'd have gotten away scot-free except the custodian was coming up the street to change the water. And he saw one of my friends walking down the street with the gate over his shoulder. And so needless to say, we were, some of us, some of us were very, very lucky to graduate. It was in the, in the winter, probably January or February, announcement came over the intercom about a, a student, a basketball player, who, who thought he was pretty good. And there was an announcement that he'd been invited to a, a special basketball camp at the University of Utah to be held in March. It was by invitation only. And uh, we all thought that was kind of interesting because that's when college basketball is the busiest with March Madness. And, and we, we thought, well, that's interesting. And this kid had told everybody about it and obviously told the school and they made an announcement. Come to find out, uh, it was a hoax. Someone had uh, fabricated this letter and, and uh, played a joke on this kid. And, uh, and uh, come to find out, uh, word trickled out that it was uh, one of the best students in the school, a 4.0 student who had just uh, fabricated this letter, sent it to this other kid and played a practical joke on him. I'd taken a large garbage can full of water and dumped it down the hallway at Davis High School. Uh, as Lee List and the assistant principal was walking by trying to get him wet, 
Uh, after that, Lee Liston had me go in and talk with uh, uh, Dick Stevenson. He was the principal and uh, sat down and I thought I'd really be in trouble, but Dick Stevenson was okay. Uh, he even indicated that uh, uh, Mr. Liston, Lee Liston, need to be cooled off. Probably the best lesson I ever learned about uh, school leadership came from uh, Clyde Jackson, Coach Jackson, I'm sorry. Well, Tamara Lowe was my principal, so that should tell you how awesome my high school experience was. Like many students, I wanted to be on student government, but unfortunately my grades weren't quite what they should have been. So I went and met with Ken Hadlock, with one of my best friends at Viewmont High School in 1991, and we decided we wanted to start a ski club for the students at Viewmont High School, which hadn't been done previously at Viewmont High. Um, we had to write a constitution and find an advisor, but when we did that, we had a great experience and had lots of students that were involved at Viewmont High, probably 200 students. I, I think the statute of uh, limitations is passed on this, so we should be good. But uh, anyway, Sam was messing around, always had a lot to say. Uh, didn't know that uh, Coach Jackson had come up behind him. and. Uh, so as he was a little rambunctious, a little irreverent there in the hall, uh, Mr. Jackson grabbed him by the ears, so from behind, and he, uh, and he said, Sam, uh, who's in charge here? And Sam said, well, I am, and started to lift on the ears and uh, started to stretch him up onto his toes, and he asked him again, he said, Sam, who's in charge here? And I think the response was, ow, 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 ow and uh, gave him a little more lift. So Sam was a good two, three inches off the ground uh, <laughs> by his ears and said again, uh, Sam, who's in charge? And the response was, you are. And put him back down and we all got the message. When I was a student in Davis School District. When I was a student in the Davis School District. One of the things that I remember most about my high school experience was I had a physics teacher named Mr. Jackson, Steve Jackson. He was kind of renowned throughout the state as being this kind of crazy mad scientist kind of guy with uh, crazy scientist hair and the big bottleneck glasses and the lab coat and everything. And Probably the most memorable time I had in high school would be with um, one of my favorite teachers, Hal Richardson. Uh, he taught physiology and he taught it uh, in such a way that and um, I could understand it. I wasn't the best student in the world, and, but he made it fun, he made it interesting. I had a really sweet teacher, her name was Mary Ellen Smith, and she was my PE teacher, she was also my English teacher. And I remember one day in class in that old, hot, bountiful junior high school, the window was open and we were supposed to be reading. But to get the window closed, you had to reach way out and pull it in. Well, as we were reading, Mrs. Smith went over to the window. The wind was blowing, and I it must have been blowing her papers. So she reaches out the window to close the window, and her wig went whoop right off. She caught it with one hand, and she put it back on her head. And I know she was so embarrassed. And she comes back in, and she had put it on wrong. And we loved her so much, nobody really wanted to embarrass her. But <laughs> she sat down. The wig was so askew that we all just burst out laughing. And she just ripped it off her head, rearranged it, and put it back on. And anyway, we loved her. I was thinking today of, of my favorite memories. And they always, other than the social aspect of school, they always come back to the classroom. Every time we'd take a classroom test, he would announce the student's scores as he handed the test back. He would stand in front of the class the day after the test, after he'd graded them, and say, Harrison. 100%. That's a pretty good score, Harrison. And then you'd hand it to him. And then he'd say, Tune, 98%. Not as good as Harrison. And he'd hand it back. There was a, a, a girl in there, and her, her last name was Grotipass. And he could never get it pronounced right. And he used to call her Grotipas. He'd say, Grotipas, 94. And he'd look down at her paper and say, that's a pretty good score for a girl, Grotipas. <laughs> my situation was a little bit different in that we moved from San Antonio, Texas, the middle of my senior year. We moved to Bountiful about November of 1975. 
I had a great experience though. There were some teachers that put their arm around me, understood my situation. John Robinson helped me with some athletic situations. Paul Waite was the head coach and brought me in and, and got me on the football team. Uh, Ruland Homer was there. Mike Timothy was also uh, a teacher and somewhat of a mentor in that uh, I was new to the area and he understood that. Uh, I didn't have a credit, uh, a sophomore credit, so I was there as a senior in his sophomore class and, and he made it a great experience. Different memories of elementary school was a teacher named Mrs. Fresca. She was my first grade teacher and she is the one that, outside of my parents, really inspired me to read. And she allowed my best friend Tony, who happens to be a teacher, Tony Bauman, in our school district, she um, allowed the two of us to come back throughout our elementary school years and teach her first grade class a book. And we, we illustrated it and read it to them. And that was always fun. We always looked forward to doing it. I will never forget. I'll never forget. I'll even start my first and second grade years. The old Stoker Elementary School in Bountiful, where my mother had gone to school, my grandfather had gone to school, my great-grandfather went to school at old Stoker Elementary. Most of the time during recess we play hopscotch. So I entered the hopscotch tournament and I took third place in this hopscotch tournament and I even still have my medal, in my bronze medal, and I even have my hoppy ta. Um, in case you don't know what it is, this is what you throw down to play hopscotch with. Anyway, that was kind of a fun memory. Uh, uh, from uh, Dart and from Davis High School, you, you spent those years uh, roaming around a building that was already old. By 1969, uh, even then, even though it was used for a lot more years, it was, it was old. And there were the catacombs and the, the underground systems, uh, and we found ourselves in those often. In fact, I even remember there were a group of us that during one assembly, you could crawl under the, uh, under the uh, area where the uh, auditorium was, and they had catacombs through there, actual uh, places that you could go in. And, uh, and then there were on the, on the floor of the uh, auditorium, there were these, I guess they were air, uh, air ducts or air systems that were look like, looked like little bells. And they had cavities, open cavities in them. And we'd stick our fingers through and tickle people's legs and ankles. And uh, we did that a couple of times. And a lot of good memories, a lot of friends. Um, that I still hang out with. Uh, Steve Hill, which unfortunately we don't have him with us anymore, but he was our class president and he was a lot of fun. And uh, I have the great opportunity of working with some of my former uh, teachers like Coach Waite, Rulin Homer. So it's kind of funny how it's gone full circle. Well, my favorite memory was when I was at Mill Creek Junior High and I was an eighth grade student there. And I remember it was snowing outside and some big guys from, from the district came. And I didn't know who they were, but they announced that a new junior high was going to be opening um, up by where I lived, which was Mueller Park Junior High. And they told us that we were able to pick the colors of the school and the um, mascot for the school. So we were really excited, all of us that were going to go to the Mueller Park Junior High. So I remember that we had different colors in mind and we chose light blue and dark blue. And the mascot that we chose was the Panthers. And we were all really excited the first day that we walked into the Mueller Park Junior High and the carpet was blue and the lockers were blue. And we really felt like, felt like the district cared about the students and listened to the students. We feel it's important that we uh, tell the story about girls' athletics. We were in the uh, very first, we call ourselves the pioneers, you might say. Uh, we were able to participate in the very first state championships for girls and we, uh, our coach at the time was Norma Cart and she coached everything so we played volleyball basketball and track and tennis she and gymnastics she did everything play and we days. wore the cutest um, gym suit she ever did see they were gold pinstripe they were gold, mustard mustard colored with, with white, white pinstripes pinstripe. and they snapped on the top and we wore a penny a penny or whatever you call them. Jersey now. No, it's a penny, know, it's a penny vest, down. a vest, and it had, they had brown numbers on them with a little gold. We, we were darling, we were yeah. very darling. <laughs>